AutoCAD is fundamentally based on commands. You will generally interact with what you are drawing or modeling by issuing a series of commands, their options, and or modifiers. For example, let's draw some lines. Click the Line tool, and notice on the command line it says Specify First Point. Click an arbitrary point in the drawing window. There's a rubber band line connecting that point with my cursor. Specify Next Point, or Undo. I'll click another point. I'll keep doing this to draw a few more line segments. Notice that I could keep going forever in this way, so I need to end this particular command by pressing either Enter, Spacebar, or the Escape key. In this case, I think I'll press the Spacebar. The command is done, and I know this because the command line is now blank. You see a flashing cursor down there on the command line, indicating that AutoCAD is now ready for another command. You can actually repeat the previously issued command by pressing either Enter or the spacebar. So I'll press the spacebar again to issue the line command, and then I'll draw a few more line segments. As I do this, notice that there are some changes on the command line. It now says close or undo in the square brackets. These are command options. You can execute them either by clicking on them on the command line or by typing the letter that's highlighted in blue. I'll type C, Enter, to close the line. It goes back to the original point where I started. Now let's draw some circles. Click the circle command and read the command line. It says specify center point for circle or a bunch of cryptic options. You can read the circle command in AutoCAD Help if you needed to understand what these options mean. But I'll tell you that 3P means 3 point, 2P means 2 point, and TTR means tangent, tangent radius. You might want to create a 2 point circle between the endpoints of two parallel lines, or a 3 point circle that has to fit within a triangle. You might create a tangent, tangent radius circle if you need a circle to fit perfectly between two other circles with a specified radius. The option you choose depends upon the geometric situation. But let's say, for sake of argument, we want to draw a circle by specifying two points. I'll type in 2P and press Enter to execute that particular option. So then it says, specify first endpoint of circle's diameter. So I'll click, and I'll click the second endpoint of the circle's diameter. And this particular command ends after you've drawn the circle. It doesn't assume that you want to keep drawing circles like the line command does. Every command is different, so you need to pay attention to what it says on the command line. If you go up here and open the circle drop-down menu, you'll see that there are many different variations of the circle. These are merely different options that are automatically typed in for you. I'll click two point here, and you see what happens is it types in circle, and then it types in 2P for you. So this is merely a convenience Instead of having to type things on the keyboard, you can find the equivalent in the user interface. I'll click two points to define this circle. There is a status bar mode toggle down here called Dynamic Input. I'll toggle that on, and let's draw another circle. This time, I'll make a three-point circle. So that types in circle, and then it uses the three-point option, and it says specify first point on circle on the command line and also by the cursor. Specify second point on circle right on the cursor, and I can also see the angle and the distance away from the initial point here with dynamic input. I'll specify a third point to complete the circle. In some cases, you'll have options that you can access through dynamic input. For example, let's draw a line. I'll specify a first point, a next point, a next point, but notice that there it says on the dynamic input prompt, it says specify next point or down arrow. If you press the down arrow, you can access the two commands, close or undo, right on screen without having to go down to the command line and click them down here, or having to type them in on the keyboard. I'll click on close here in the dynamic input prompt to draw a third line segment and close it back to the original point. Commands have a history that you can access by pressing the F2 key. You can see that this is a list of the different commands that I've just issued, and I can go back through this history using the undo command here. I can click on this, 
Each time I click, I go back a step. There's an arrow next to the undo tool where you can see a whole list of all the history that I've done so far. I can go back to this point. Or I could redo forward in time. You can go back and forth through your history an unlimited amount back to the point where you opened the drawing. The history is stored in RAM, so it's volatile memory and it's not stored in the drawing file. Therefore, you can go back through the history today, but if you save the file and come back tomorrow and reopen it, that history will be lost. You can think of commands as a bit like writing a sentence. The commands are the verbs. The objects that you draw are the nouns. And it's possible to make something like adjectives which describe the commands and specify them. So for example, I'll draw another line. That's the verb. I'll click a point to start drawing line segments. And as I do this, I'm creating nouns, if you will. Now I'm going to hold down the Shift key and right-click to open a special context menu that has a list of object snaps. Object snaps allow you to connect objects to other objects at specific geometric points. I'll click midpoint and move the cursor around and you'll see that green midpoints will appear on each line segment. This allows me to snap precisely to these specified points. So the object snap is a bit like an adjective in this sentence that I'm writing. I'll click here to draw the line segment, and then I'll put a period on the end of the sentence by pressing the spacebar. You can actually make the sentences in reverse order by selecting the nouns first and then choosing a verb. So for example, I could select these objects, and then I'll choose a verb, in this case, erase. Alternatively, I could do that in the traditional form, which is to issue the verb first, and then select the nouns, and then put a period on the sentence, if you will, by pressing Enter or Spacebar. The Escape key is used to cancel out of any currently running command. So let's say I want to move these lines, so I'll click Move, and I'll select them, and then I decide, well, actually, I didn't want to move them, I wanted to copy them. So to get out of this, without changing anything, I can just press the Escape key, and it cancels out of the Move command. The Escape key is different than Undo, because Escape merely cancels out of what you're currently doing, but Undo will take you back through the steps that you've already done. So in this video, you've seen how commands work, how to access their options, how to undo and redo, review the command history, and cancel out of any running command.